so many things to love about Christmas, isn't there? So many great things to love about Christmas. Now, I used to work in retail in a bike shop, and so Christmas was the biggest time of year. It was absolute chaos, and so our goal every year would be to make it through Christmas. Well, Christmas, it feels a bit chaotic, doesn't it? And um, I've got this giant wheel behind me, and it feels a bit like we're on a game show, doesn't it? And um, kids, you've got one of these wheels in your bag. See if you can pull it out a mini version. Hold it up, see if you can colour it in while we go through. And um, it's going to feel even more so like a game show when I take the wheel like this and I spin it. And the reason why I do this, why I spin this wheel, is because life can feel like this, can't it? Life can feel like it's spinning around and around and around on repeat. And the last three years have been exactly like that, haven't they? There's been events in our world that have completely turned our world upside down. There's been things that have happened that have shown how fragile and how messy life is. There's been things that happen that show that life just turns around and around and around. Life just keeps on spinning. And guess what? You ain't keeping up. It's that expectation versus reality. You know, what we expect life to be like, what we expect things to be like versus the reality of what happens. And here we've got this, what we expect. This is reality. Last few years have felt like that, haven't they? It's expectation versus reality. What we expect life to be like versus the reality of what it really is. It's that expectation of kids' school, that school's going to be a place that we're going to love, we're going to play so much sport, we're going to get good grades, we're going to have so many friends versus the reality of eating lunch on your own in the playground. It's that expectation of that job, that work, the dream job that you've been waiting so long for. It's going to pay all the bills. It's going to be so satisfying and fulfilling versus the reality of the long hours at the office and the reality of the job that just gets boring and repetitive. It's that expectation of the holiday, you know, that holiday that you've seen on Instagram and it looks so amazing, you can't wait for it versus the reality of the crowds and the people that are absolutely everywhere and the bad weather. It's that expectation of that relationship, that relationship that promises so much versus the reality of the tough times that come. And it's not just the last few years, is it, that's shown us how fragile and messy life is. Even before the last few years, there were issues in our world. And now as we look that we're through the other side, the reality is, is that life is still fragile. Life is still messy. And life, it keeps on spinning around and around and around on repeat. And you know, Christmas can remind us of this, can't it? Kids, think of that dream gift that you finally get on Christmas and then you open it up and it breaks in the first five minutes that you play with it. Think about all those chips and the sugar that you eat on Christmas and then what do you end up with? A headache, right? Or that relationship around the dinner table that ends in a fight. Christmas shows us that our world is messy. Christmas shows us that our world is on repeat, going around and around and around. And you know what we do in that space? In the ordinary of life, we try to fill it with something extraordinary just to make it seem a little bit better. We try to put anything in that place to make life less, more than, greater than ordinary. We try to make it extraordinary. That's the reality of the world that we live in. You're probably thinking, Ben, it's Christmas. Stop being so negative. But friends, we're talking about real life. And real life is messy. And real life is fragile. And doesn't there have to be so much more? Doesn't there have to be something more than just this spin cycle, this world that's going around and around and around? You know what's incredible is that 2,000 years ago, God himself broke into this world. And that was the reading from the Gospel of Luke that we just heard before. And Luke, he went around and he put a microphone in front of everyone who saw and heard Jesus. And he asked them to tell him what happened. Let's pick up and see what happened. Luke chapter 2, verse 4. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths 
and she placed them in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And so there you have it, the story of Christmas, that first Christmas, a heavily pregnant lady that travels for days and days and days. There's no cars, there's no pain for, for birth, there's no birthing suite. And then finally, when the baby boy is born, she lays him in a manger, a feeding trough for clouds. If you've ever seen something ordinary, this is it. But you know it's in the ordinary of life that God does something extraordinary. And did you see the angels who appeared in the Bible reading? Did you see the glory of God that shone around? This is something extraordinary that God is doing. Have a look at the next verse, verse 11. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. You see, in the ordinary of life, something extraordinary happens. That very first Christmas, God breaks into human history and changes everything forever. This is not just a baby, but this is a baby who's going to grow up to be a king. This is a baby who's going to grow up to be a savior who will save people. This is not just a person, but this is God himself entering in. This is God himself coming and breaking into this ordinary world that is on the spin cycle, repeating and repeating and repeating. This is God doing something extraordinary. Because you know the creator that made us? He takes on the very stuff that he made. He becomes just like you and I. The creator, he comes in, he gets dirt underneath his fingernails. He becomes one of us in the ordinary of life at Christmas. God does something extraordinary and he enters in. God walks in our shoes. God walks on our paths. God gets the dirt underneath his fingernails. He doesn't sit distant from the creation, but he enters in and he does something about the messiness and the brokenness of this world. He cries real tears in the face of death. And so when life is ordinary, when life spins around and around and around on repeat, you know Jesus looks at you and he says, I get you. I understand you. The creator Jesus, he walks in our shoes. He says, I get you. I understand you. You see, God, he knows about the ordinary in this world. He knows about the mess. He knows about how fragile this world is. He knows the tears, the pain, the suffering. And he comes to do something about it. And that's what Christmas is all about. It's all about God entering in and taking on human flesh. And did you see what the shepherds did in that story? Well, they hear the good news from the angels. And what do they do? They come and they see Jesus for themselves. Let's pick it up in our next reading on the screen. Verse 10. And the angels said to them, the shepherds, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And then jumping down verse 6, so they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. You see these shepherds, they were living in the same ordinary world that you and I are. They were living in the same world that spins and spins again and again on repeat. They're working away just like you and I, trying to make ends meet. They're minding their own business. They're living the good parts of life, but they're also living in the mess and the fragile parts of life as well. And see what those shepherds did? They heard about Jesus and they dropped absolutely everything and they went to see him. You know what? They could have easily said to the angels, you know what, guys? We're busy. We're not interested. You know, they could have said to the angels, hey, we'll go later on in life. We don't need to do it just now. And friends, I think sometimes when we read the Bible, we look at people like the shepherds and just think, well, they lived 2,000 years ago. They weren't as enlightened as us. They weren't as smart. So of course they went to Jesus. Or we look at these shepherds and say, well, their world was better than ours. It wasn't as messy. It wasn't as evil. Of course they went to Jesus. 
or we say about these shepherds, well, they were really good people. So of course Jesus would accept them. Or we look at the shepherds and say they were really, really bad people. So of course they needed Jesus. But they're living in the same ordinary world as you and I. They're living in the fragile, messy and broken world. And they drop everything and they come to Jesus. And friends, this is the invitation for each one of us this Christmas. Just like those shepherds, we're invited to come to Jesus. In this world that we live in that just keeps spinning around and around, in this world that is ordinary that we live in, we're invited to come to Jesus. And did you see in that Bible reading what Jesus offers? Well, Jesus, he offers peace. He offers joy. Have a look in our next Bible reading from Luke. That's Luke chapter 2, verse 10. The angel said to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good, good news that will cause great joy, joy for all people. Verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Did you see those words? Good news, joy, peace. This is what Jesus offers each one of us. And you know, that's what we really need because we live in a world where we don't always experience and know and have joy and peace. We live in a world that's fragile and broken and messy. And if we're honest, each one of us contribute to this world that is not in peace. You know, at the center of this stands a barrier of sin, a barrier that stands between us and God. A barrier that stops us from having relationship and being friends with God. We've all tried to live life without God. All of us have made that choice. And at the center of that is sin. And you know what? As we live in a world with no joy and peace, we try to look everywhere to get it. We try to look everywhere except for God to get it. But remember Jesus coming that very first Christmas? Remember God breaking in and entering in, God himself getting dirt under his fingernails? Well, Jesus, in the ordinary spinning of life, he entered in to do something about it. And you fast forward all the way to the Easter cross where Jesus says yes and willingly goes to that cross, the perfect man, God himself, who comes to die on that cross to fix that barrier of sin that is between you and God, between me and God. Jesus takes that upon himself. He dies the death that you and I should have died. And you know what? Not only that, but Jesus, three days later, he walks straight out of that tomb, alive and well, saying, I have completely done this. I've ticked all the boxes. This is done and dusted. So friends, you know when life spins and spins and spins? You know when life is fragile and messy? When life is ordinary? We can live knowing Jesus with joy and hope. We can live being friends with God, having that problem of sin removed and fixed. Having peace and joy with him now and forever. And so really the invitation this Christmas is just like those shepherds. You're invited to come to Jesus. All people are invited to come to Jesus this Christmas. To have your sin fixed to experience the joy and peace knowing him. And friends, in the busyness of Christmas, friends and family and food, don't miss out on Jesus because then you miss out on absolutely everything. I remember this story about this guy and he's Joshua Bell. He's a famous violinist and in 2004 he played a show in Boston and Tickets were $100 a piece. He's holding a $3.5 million violin up there and the tickets completely sold out. The show was completely packed and there were people waiting in line to get an autograph, to get a photo with him. This guy is one of the best musicians of our time. He is absolutely extraordinary. And then a couple of weeks later in 2004, he played in a Washington Metro for 45 minutes during peak hour. Here he is playing a three and a half million dollar violin. Here he is playing six of the most complex pieces 
that anyone could ever play. And for 45 minutes, he's standing in that Washington Metro. Take a look at what happens. You know, in the busyness of that morning, there was over a thousand people that walked past him. There he was playing a three and a half million dollar violin, six of the most complex musical pieces in the whole world. And you know, six people only stopped for a brief moment before looking at their watches and walking on. In 45 minutes, he made $32. One of the most extraordinary musicians in the whole wide world, yet in the busyness of life, in the spin cycle, in the ordinary of life, the whole crowd completely missed out on something extraordinary. Friends, do not do that with Jesus, who is the most extraordinary. Today, Christmas 2022, say yes to Jesus and following him. Let me pray. Father in heaven, thank you that you're a good God, that you love us, and thank you so much that you gave us the greatest gift at Christmas. You gave us your son, Jesus, that you entered in, got dirt underneath your fingernails, that you cried tears in the face of death, that you walk alongside of us and say, hey, I get you, I understand you. And not only that, but you invite all of us to come to you. And then not only that, but you forgive us of our sin and you give us peace and joy with you now and for all of eternity. And so we pray that we might this Christmas, 2022 and onward, know and remember Jesus. Amen.